what up, y'all? Speak the Weaver from the Drop of Gem Show, the most infamous hip hop and boxing podcast on the planet. Yo, real quick before this video drops, I just want to let y'all know we need y'all to subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell icon. Subscribe because you want to know what's going on with the channel and be part of the Drop of Gem family. The bell icon notifies you immediately when we have a video dropping and we drop several a week. And also hit the like button because it increases the visibility of the show. So we thank y'all for your support. Uh, again, hit the subscribe, like, bell icon, and uh, we we'll catch you on the next video. Peace. So you know, right. Bam Birmingham. Um, you know, he, you know, back then, you know, he talked to Art Bioga, Art Bioga, and you know, he he put you guys on to the Akari's brothers from France. Um, you know, and, yes. and that's who was and that's who was promoting you early on in your career. Yes. Um, why, yeah. why, why them versus like the Lou Duvas, the, the Don Kings, why weren't they up hip to you or, or uh, on the wiki right bandwagon, so, so to speak? But, yeah, but like I told you, I was a slick boxer. I was too, I was quick. I was slick boxer mm -hmm. and they, nobody could hit me. So it, I was just, I'll box you. I was knocking people out back then. I was, uh, my record, I, I think I was like 19 and old with like 10 or 11 knockouts. So it was cool. It was just that, you know, they, they, they wanted what they wanted. You know what I'm saying? He had Oprah Carr back then. They had all these other little fighters that, you know, they was already getting the hype. So, you know, they weren't looking at me like that. So it was like, you know what, you're not going to get your hype right here. None of the big promoters don't want to put you on. And, and, and HBO, I couldn't get the network to put me on. So it was like, you know, we got a deal to go overseas and make double the money I was making over here because they wasn't really paying me shit in, in Florida. So it was just like, okay, let me go over here, make double the money. Then I started tripling the money. So then I got to make my, my, my name worldwide because once I went over there, I was boxing the lights out of them. It was like, man, this is this is cake work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, um. You know, you you know, you by you bringing up, you talking about uh, like he, he was a slick fighter and it wasn't really you know trying to fuck with you. That remind me a little bit of what Abel Sanchez said uh, about a month or two ago. He got in some trouble. He was talking shit how how black like the black fighters aren't good pay per view stars. You remember when he said that it was when he was talking about Triple G? He was talking about how black fighters don't really sell their slick style. Nobody wants to see him run. Oh. Anybody wants that Mexican style? I mean, did that that did, did that affect you overseas at all? Or was, no, or was it, no, you know, t no, totally different no, culture no, no. over there. That, it was, Overseas it was totally different. See, overseas love a boxer. They love. They called me a master boxer over there. You know what I'm saying? They was like, he's a master boxer. You know the class. They liked all that. But it was. It ain't no problem. Right. Like black fighters in the U.S. can't sell. No, we can sell. You know, like they try. They always try to say that. But back when, listen, we ain't have all right. the social media and all the crazy stuff. Look, man, when right. I did pay per view with whoever I did it with, that was the biggest pay per view them fighters did. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like when I did with Trinidad, I, me and Trinidad did big numbers before. You know, he had yep. Oscar now besides Oscar because because that's awesome. Yep. But I'm saying anybody else. Me and Trinidad did. Me and Bernard did best numbers Bernard ever did. You know what I'm saying? Before that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 it's just, you know, people really take back and look at it. I was I was doing great numbers, but I couldn't get the network to fully get behind me. And then they got behind me because right. they had no choice, because I kept beating everybody. Everybody, yeah. they made me, like, if you look <laughs> at my record, man, all, a lot of the fighters I fought before I started getting to Shane and them was all number one contenders because nobody else wouldn't fight me. Mm -hmm. I had to fight. I mm -hmm. fought number one contender, number one contender, number one contender, number one contender, because nobody wanted to fight. And then once I did get the belt, then, you know, I had to wait for the number one contender because nobody, I couldn't get no no unification box. Like, nobody really wanted to fight. So it was just like, you know, just keep knocking them off and eventually you're going to get them. And that's what I did. Just kept knocking them off, knocking them off. And then Shane finally stepped up and said, look, he wanted the belts, and I, I had the belt that he wanted. He had to come through me. And, you know, it was a great thing. I, like I said, I took my head off the chain for doing that, you know what I'm saying, because without him, I really don't know. I, I might have I had to take a different route, you know what I'm saying?